In this video, we are going over seven football tips and tricks for defenders. So if you are a defender or defense-minded player, or you just need to add some more defensive qualities to your game, this video is gonna be absolutely perfect for you. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. That's coming up next. Hi guys, welcome to Simply Soccer. I'm Dave, and if you're new here, we release videos every single week that help you improve your game and stand out on the pitch. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and bell icon if you want to improve your game and start standing out on the pitch in your matches. Now I wanna focus on the defenders, the more defensive qualities that a player needs in this video by giving you seven things you need to focus on, seven tips and tricks for defenders. Let's get right into the first one. So we're actually gonna do this in reverse order. So we're gonna start with number seven, which is a very very simple mindset but even at the professional level if you're not focusing you might fall victim to this and it's don't dive in and the amount of players I see diving in unnecessarily and then getting beaten and then not being able to recover is too many times to count I see way too many players doing it at the amateur level and I can even see it being made when a player loses concentration in a professional match even at the highest level but you'll notice something about the absolutely best defenders in the world they only dive in when they're hundred percent they're gonna get the ball or they have have no other choice. The best example I can give you is Virgil van Dijk. I was watching the Liverpool game over the weekend and the commentators just kept talking and waxing lyrical about how he is so good at staying on his feet and because of that he wins the ball more often than not. He doesn't commit, he won't cause too many fouls, he doesn't get carded or ever sent off, um, and he always seems to make the best decision because he waits until he knows what he needs to do. He stays on his feet and that allows him to quickly do things without being on the ground on the deck and someone beating him. This is one of the reasons why most people don't dribble past him as well because he stays on his feet more often than not and that allows him to not get beaten in the way that many other players get beaten. So make sure you are not diving in too much and make sure if you are, it's fitting one of two criteria. You're 100% sure you're gonna get the ball. If you're not 100% sure, more often than not, you should stay on your feet. Or two, you really have no choice and it's a last ditch tackle. Okay, number six is positional discipline. This is another one that Virgil van Dijk is incredible at, um, but the best defenders in the world are the ones that know where they need to be at all times. They know where they need to be in general, so they know what positional zones they need to be in um, in different uh uh, transitions when different transitions are going on on the pitch, but they also know what to do if one of their players gets caught out. They also know what, to, uh, know what to do if they get caught out or how to recover. And you need to know exactly where you need to be in each situation. The worst defenders are the ones that are very prone to mistakes are the ones with terrible positional sense, not knowing where they need to be in different uh, situations, not knowing how to anticipate things to, and so that they can block or prevent whatever uh, attack is happening. And the more you know what positions to be in in each situation uh, situations the better a defender you're gonna be and actually I would say 50% or more of defending comes down to this because if you're always in the right position you're always gonna be in the right spot to clear the ball away intercept it you know make sure someone can't turn there or turn around and face you so half the battle of defending is knowing what positions to be in and getting yourself there and again you can do this and learn this through watching players like Virgil van Dijk that are amazing at this skill okay so number three is something that basically you learn as a youth player but will apply all the way up until even the pro game and it's just the idea of when in doubt boot it out and one thing that will make you make a mistake more than anything else is nervousness or doubt when you're at the back the place to never lose the ball is in your own defensive third and that's why when a center back is stripped from the ball it almost always leads to a goal scoring chance for the other team and so if you have any doubt that you're not going to be able to play the ball out accurately to one of your players you kick that ball as far upfield as high as you can or out of play and don't take any risks even the best defenders do this again i'm going to keep coming back to virgil van dyke because i think he's the best defender in the world and Although he's one of the most composed and most calm and has some of the best distribution, if he's in a tight spot, he's not afraid to blow that ball upfield or out of bounds. And when you're a defender, if you're in doubt, guess what? Kick the ball out because it's much better than having it stripped from you or it leading to an attacking threat from the other team. So when you're in doubt, play safe, no nonsense, get the ball out of there. Number four is composure and calm. 
And again, we're gonna keep coming back to Virgil here, but one of the things that makes him the best is he's so confident, so composed, and so calm, and this allows you to do way more. This is one of the reasons, by the way, that he always stays on his feet, or why he stays on his feet. Because he's not rash, he's not losing his head. Usually when a player is always going to ground unnecessarily, it's because they're getting nervous, they're diving in because they, they lack composure. But the best defenders that stay on their feet, that make good decisions, are the ones that keep their composure and keep their calmness um, while they're defending. Now, I have many videos that are gonna help you with this, including how to stay calm and composed in football. I'll link that up above and put it down below so you can watch that to get a better idea, a more in-depth idea on how to do this. But you need to be working towards being a very composed center back or defender back there because if you're always losing your cool, you're gonna be a liability back there and you're gonna eventually be subbed or benched or be out of the team completely. You know, having a defender that's um, a loose cannon or can't keep their calm is always a liability and is always going to hurt the team. So this is something you really need to focus on heavily if it's a problem area for you. Number three is anticipation. And again, this has to do with positional discipline is going to help you with this. This has to do with soccer intelligence, soccer IQ, but it's being able to see what's going to unfold before it does, or at least plugging up the gaps that would lead to something dangerous happening. Again, this is anticipating certain passes and blocking the passing lane. This is anticipating the ball over the top and not being flat-footed so that you can't recover. This is anticipating that the striker is going to go left or right or knowing when you need to contain um, so that they can't do any damage. You know, the more you play, the more experience you have, the better at this you're going to get. And the more calm and composed you are, like we mentioned in the last one, the more you're going to be able to do this. Because in order to anticipate, you need to have a clear mind. You can't be rash. You can't be getting in your own head. But if you can keep your calm and composure, and one of the reasons why this is so important is because it will help you in anticipating what is going on. It will keep you hooked into the match and tuned in, in flow, so that you're not um, going through the motions or Again, getting in your own head, which is going to prevent you from anticipating what's going on. But again, another huge skill to develop um, and one that's going to really be naturally coming out of being composed and calm, having good positional discipline. But another thing you need to look into developing if you want to be a really great defender. Number six is to adapt to your opponent. Because if you're a defender, you're gonna get many different opponents. You're gonna get some that are fast. You're gonna get some that are skillful. You're gonna get some that are both. You're gonna get some that are more target men and, and they're, they're better at holding up the ball. You're gonna get some that you're gonna always win the header against. You need to determine what your opponent's weaknesses are from the very beginning, the first five minutes of the game, or even if you know that player before they come in the game and exploit those weaknesses. For example, do you know that this player you know, shies away from physicality? then maybe you need to get a little more physical with them. Do you know that they love to, they're quick and they love to spin in, in um, behind, then maybe you should back off a little bit so they can't get that space and you can anticipate what they're doing. Are they a, def um, a player that really likes to get their back to goal and hold the ball up? Well, then maybe you need to get in front of them or prevent them from doing that. You know, so you need to study your opposition even in the first few minutes of the game and try and read what they're trying to do. Now, just by looking at them, you can usually get a feel for what this is. For example, a tall six foot three striker like myself is gonna probably want to hold the ball up and probably isn't the quickest. That doesn't mean it's necessarily true, um, but that's something you can anticipate in the very beginning. And as the game goes on, you'll learn more and more what those uh, players' preferences are. The idea is to learn what the player's weaknesses are and exploit them. Again, if every time you're physical with the player, they don't do anything and they shy away, Keep doing that. Follow what's working. And number one, guys, is keep it simple. Nothing is more frustrating at the back than a center back or a defender who tries to overcomplicate the process, who does things that are unnecessary and then makes unnecessary mistakes, which lead to getting goals scored against your team. For the most part, you should be giving the ball up, you should not be dribbling up field, you should not be doing complex things. Now you can add certain things to your game like incredible distribution, for example, going back to Virgil van Dijk, he is incredible at passing the ball out of the back, playing long balls. But if you actually watch him, most of the time he just plays a simple ball to his other center back, or Fabinho checks back, or Henderson checks back, and he allows them to then be that kind of quarterback role from the center of the park. So. 
for the most part, you need to keep things simple. This doesn't mean that sometimes you won't express yourself, maybe go on a run, get up and try and score, but you really need to weigh your options. And you need to understand that your first job, first and foremost, is to defend and prevent the other team from scoring, not to be a playmaker and try and score for your team. Again, that's a bonus, and you should add that element a little bit to your game, but the first thing, the more valuable player is a defender that can defend well versus a defender that can attack better than he can defend. You know, we see this with wingbacks all the time. Someone who's really good at attacking, but sucks on defense. They're a liability, right? You need one that has a mixture of both. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Question of the day is out of everything I went over, which one do you need to work on the most? And what is your level of ability for that thing on a scale of 1 to 10? Thanks, guys, so much for tuning into this video. As always, I'll have two videos up on screen to help you continue uh, your progression as a player. Make sure you like the video as well and share it um, with your friends um, using the share button down below. That really does help the channel to grow more and more. So thank you once again, and I'll see you in the next video.